Hi, I'm Richard Moraes, Senior Minister at Unity of Phoenix Spiritual Center, and I want to thank you for visiting our website and for tuning in to today's message. If you feel inspired by today's talk, I really encourage you to make a donation by hitting that button below and making a contribution to this ministry. It'll allow us to continue these messages online and to do the great work we do here at Unity of Phoenix, which is to inspire people to live better lives. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for your support, and we hope to see you at a Sunday real soon. Okay, so this month I made a commitment to, to teach into, talk into, how do we heal our whole world? And um, that's a pretty big subject. And, and you know, Richard and Jill and I, we kind of go every summer and we kind of tuck ourselves away and we kind of look at our talk titles for the year and we found it just works better if we have our, all of our talk titles, all of our themes worked out for the whole year. So we're not trying to make this stuff up as we go because we found it just works better if we're planning out. So when I said I wanted to, to talk about it, I wanted to do a series based on healing the world, they both said, too big. Like, it's too much. You can't do that in four weeks. I said, I know, it's too much, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because it's, it's that thing that, that we need to deal with. It's like, how, how do we heal, and how do we heal our world? And last week I talked about violence. You know, because violence is the problem. Right? We don't all have to be in agreement, but violence is the problem. And then today we had the experience of watching a young person go into a school for the, feels like the umpteenth time already this year, and, and take other kids' lives. And so today I want to talk about love. Because it feels like it's not enough. Have you ever felt that way? in your own life, in your own situation, in your own relationships, or that, that love's just not enough. Yeah, love and what else? You know, what other army, what other situation, what other thing do we need? Because love by itself could not possibly be enough to heal what's going on in the world today. And that's where I want to go. That's what I want to talk about. And, and so the question that I have before you today is, do you think everybody feels loved? Okay, so if, if, if there's a level of agreement that not everybody feels loved, then what are we going to do about that? Okay? So this is where I, you know that I'm not an art major, right? Right? So this is going to kind of be, this is kind of, North and South America. <laughs> That's England. Scandinavia is up here. This is Africa. And put India over here. That's now the, the uh, Indian Ocean. Okay, so this is the world. In more of a, a Salvador Dali kind of a look, right? <laughs> Maybe I'm a genius, you know? <laughs> right? So this is the world, right? Now, in this world, where's God? How many of you were taught that God was way over here somewhere? Right? Somewhere over there. But where's God? Where, where, where do we teach God? Like that God is within us and all around us, right? So one of the things I want to start with today is the experience that people have in near-death experiences. The overwhelming experience that people have in near-death experience is a profound sense of love. Right? So in the world today, in this world, right, there's lots of people that don't feel loved until they get close to death, and the first thing they see is they begin to pass to the other side is this profound experience of love. So it's like, well, if love is fully present, if it's all here, right, if, if, if it's fully present and it's all here, then do we, are we really going to keep waiting till we die till we experience it? Beca and some people are actually dying because their soul is so in pain without feeling love. 
Does that make sense? So the question over and over again I want to come back to is what are we going to do about that? So we know that there's this infinite supply of love that we live in. That, that's, that, that you, as soon as you get out of your own consciousness, there's this overwhelming experience of love, and yet we can spend years, we can spend lifetimes not in it. And then we get to the other side, and it's like, well, this is nice. What's wrong with there? Who thought that was a good plan? And it's like, oh. But each one of us is the channel for God's infinite love. But if our heart is closed, there's just not enough. There's just not enough. And so over and over and over again, we, we get mad that other people aren't, have you ever been mad at somebody who didn't love you right? <laughs> have you just wanted to hand them a, like a little half sheet of paper and says, this is exactly how you're supposed to love me. Like we get so angry, so upset that people aren't loving us right. And the reality is there's an infinite supply of love and we're just, all of us collectively, not doing a very good job of channeling it in a three-dimensional form. Can, will you go that far with me tonight? Right? So over and over again, what I want you to see is that there's an infinite amount of love, that it permeates the entire universe, and the only place we're not experiencing in a profound way is this consciousness that we call Earth, this three-dimensional consciousness where we are not experiencing this overwhelming, unconditional, ecstatic level of love. Now, it doesn't mean everybody on this planet isn't experiencing this level of love. There tends to be those enlightened beings, the closer they awaken to God, the more they awaken, the more they move it, tend to move in to this experience of this level of rapture, right? Because as the veil gets thinner and thinner, as you awaken more and more, you tend to experience more and more love. But there's a lot of people in a lot of dark places who are not feeling very loved. Can I just get an Amen. Great. So let's so let's let's take the next step then. Okay, so it's all right here. So let's look at what happens. I don't use my notes anyway. I don't know why I bring them up. All right, so let's look at somebody comes into your life. This is just anybody, right? Somebody comes into your life, and right here. They're going to experience one of two things. They're going to either experience love or they're going to be judged. Right? And, and I, this is an oversimplification, but just go with me, okay? Now, everybody, those are the two options. In every moment, in every situation, they're either going to feel loved or they're going to feel judged over and over and over again. That's what happens. You, you come into somebody and either their heart is open and you just feel their love for you or you go into the situation and their heart is closed and you get, ugh, right? Now, if, if this person is coming into your life, feels love, they go this way and at this level they begin to heal, Right? They heal all their drama, they heal all their stories, they heal all their unworthiness, they heal everything because the moment they just get loved and not judged, everything in their life begins to transform. Have you had that experience where somebody loved you so much, your own sense of unworthiness didn't have a chance? Like I hope and I pray everybody has had that experience of being so loved that your sense of unworthiness could not stand in that much love. Like it just looked ridiculous. Like this person loves me so much, how could I ever feel unworthy? Right? That over and over again, in the presence of love, we just have to heal. And that whatever area in your life you want to heal, I'm going to invite you just to surround it and unfold it in pure love. If your finances need to be healed, if your relationships need to be healed, if your work life needs to be healed, that whatever needs to be healed, I want you to really make a commitment tonight to really just bring so much more love into that area. Just see that area being immersed in pure love. Because in the presence of love, everything has to heal. Everything gets taken up to a higher ground. Every, everything is taken up to God. Now, when we're judged, a very interesting thing happens. Has everybody felt judged by somebody that was important to you? 
at least once. Okay, and what happens when we get judged is really interesting because we don't like it, right? Like, and, it, and especially when it comes from somebody that's in an important relationship to us. Significant people in our life, we, we really do not like to be judged by them, right? So what begins to happen is that instead of being healed by that, we start doing Right? And the idea is that as we, as we, the more we get judged, the more we think we have to be worthy or get it right or be smart enough or be a good athlete or have enough money or be cute enough or whatever the story is, we begin to start doing things so that we can finally get them to open our heart and love us the way we want. And over and over again, what this just begins to support is, our, is more and more ego experiences. Because the ego believes that we have to do more to be worthy of love. Have you, has everybody had that experience where if you could just get the promotion or if you could just get whatever it was, then you were going to finally be worthy of love? And love just says, oh my gosh, I love you right there. Over and over again, love just says, I love you right there. But our ego says, yeah, you may love me because you're not very smart. <laughs> right? But if I did this just a little bit better, you would love me more. So I'm going to be better. I'm going to be smarter. I'm going to have more money. I'm going to be better looking. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to conquer the world so that you love me. The problem is when love is based on doing, does it ever feel real? Can you ever do enough? You can never do enough. And the problem is, you know, I, I work with really successful people right? And every successful person I've ever worked with, there's this underlying belief that says, if they really knew who I was, it wouldn't work anymore, right? Because they, they've learned that their doingness is what's getting people's attention, not their beingness. And what we really want is our beingness to be the place where we get loved. That just being who we are is lovable. Because it, it doesn't make sense to our soul for it to be any other way. Like our soul doesn't understand why we keep working so hard to get loved when, it, when there's some place in our soul that remembers that it used to be a free gift. And that some of us just think that's so immature and childish, and we are so committed to doing more and more and being more and being more and doing all the next things and getting the next promotion and getting the next thing and that our house, our car, everything looks just right so people will finally give us the respect that we think we deserve. But even when we get that respect, do we ever feel profoundly loved? And we don't. And so we've created this society where people are working so hard to to try to earn whatever it is that they think they're going to earn, but nobody's getting loved. And even in the times when people do love us unconditionally, we just think they're dumb. Has anybody ever loved you more than you think you deserve? And you just really thought their intelligence needed to be questioned? Because, like, I'm sorry, you don't know me well enough to know I'm not really worthy of that much love. So I wish you would just stop and let me earn it a little bit more because earning it makes me feel better, because that's what I'm used to. So what would happen tonight if we became a safe place just for love? Just for love. Okay. I want to go one more step. Okay. So... So we talked a lot last week about violence. Now, one of the things I want you to see with violence is, is that violence tends to be, and again, did I say this was a generalization? This is a generalization. Violence tends to be created out of what? Can you read that? This says anger, right? That violence tends to create anger. Now, what's interesting about anger is that 100% of the time is created out of feeling like a victim. 100%. You cannot be angry without feeling like a victim. 
What do you think of the last time you were angry about anything? About somebody cutting you off in the highway, about what your spouse did or didn't do, about what the choices that your kids are making? That any time we're angry, 100 not just 92%, 100% of the time, we feel like we've been victimized by that. A hundred percent of the time that you cannot be angry without feeling like a victim. hundred percent of the time, right? So when we feel like a victim, I'll go to here, how much do we feel loved? How much? Zero? Well, not a lot, right? Okay, so when we feel like a victim, do we feel like we have complete permission to retaliate for whatever we believe somebody's done to us? Right? Which takes us back to violence. Right? So that every time we feel like a victim, we feel completely justified if they cut us off and we feel like a victim, we feel completely justified by going back and cutting them off. Or, or telling them they're number one in our book. <laughs> or, or whatever we do, right? Like we, we feel victimized, and so whatever we do seems appropriate for the victimization. And we don't ever see this link. Because if you told an angry person that they're feeling like a victim, they would then really punch you in the nose. Right, because they feel powerful in their anger. They feel like their anger gives them strength and the ability to fix things and to, <laughs> right? They, they, we don't want to believe that our anger really means that we feel profoundly victimized by that situation. And so over and over again, the thing that breaks the cycle, excuse me, I'm trying not to give you my big old behind. <laughs> the thing that breaks the cycle is what? Love. Right? And so over and over again, what I want you to see is the most important thing is that we, that, that we get loved. And to get love, what do we have to do? Can you read that? That's an E. Tell the truth. Over and over again, what we have to do to get loved is tell the truth. We actually, instead of, we actually have to be vulnerable. We actually have to be transparent. Because if we're not vulnerable and transparent, even if people love us, it won't count, it won't feel like love. But when you're angry, when you feel like a victim, how many times do we want to say, boy, I really felt like a victim in that situation? Does anybody want to say that? No, we don't want to say that, but that's the problem. Over and over again, we, we go into the cycle because we feel so disempowered. We feel so angry. We feel so unlovable that it keeps us from doing the very thing that helps us. And the thing that helps us is tell the truth. Where are you feeling wounded? Where are you feeling beat up? Where are you feeling less than? And when you say that to somebody who can love you and they love you right there, it sets you free. Over and over again, the only way that we can stop all this violence is that when we take 100% responsible for the places where we feel victimized and actually share that with people that can love us by telling the truth. Now, does that mean that we need to tell the truth to everybody? No, three or four people. All we need is our little team. If we have three or four people that we can tell the complete truth to and they'll love us right there, it sets us free. And so what I want you to begin to see over and over again is that anytime you feel any level of shame, anytime you feel any level of upset, I want you to tell the truth to people that love you and see if their love makes a difference. See if it doesn't help. Now, how many of you were taught not to talk about anything? You are my people, right? And how much does it help when you don't talk about things? Do you ever feel, oh, man, I feel great about not sharing that. Man, I just can't wait to not talk some more. It never feels better. 
that the only way we can change this, the only way we can increase the amount of love is to tell the truth every time over and over again and see if anybody can love us right there. Right? But if you just give them your facade, you think they're just loving your facade. You don't think they're really loving the person underneath all this craziness. So the next time you get angry, instead of acting it out, what if you actually had to tell somebody why you felt victimized in that situation? Can you imagine it would change us? No, Richard, I just really just like to cut people off. That's my go-to position. If somebody gets me angry in traffic, I just cut them off, and then I feel powerful because I just gave it to them. Oh, great. Now we've got one person victimizing another person who's victimizing them back. How's that working for us? Does anybody feel like we're having a win right now? No. This is what create systemic change. That every time you're angry, you take 100% responsibility for it and share it with another child of God who can love you right there. Every time. Every time, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Every time. And see if by telling the truth, you don't feel better. Now, how many of you have ever held on to a painful situation more than a minute? Right? How many of you, if, I ha if you grabbed a hot pan on your stove, could hold on to it for even a minute? Could anybody hold on to it for a minute? So the, the implication is that your body is smarter than your heart. Right? How many of you have ever, in a painful situation, closed your heart down thinking that that was going to help? So that it was completely sealing the pain within your system. Does it ever help? No. The only thing that helps is to let it go. That over and over and over again, we need more love. And we're not having to make this stuff up. It is the nature of the universe. But we have to be the conduit, and it has to be the place where we need it the most, where we feel the most wounded, where we feel the most victimized, where we feel the most disappointed. That's the place where we need the most love, and it's sharing that with another human being and letting them love us right there. It sets us all free. Would you walk into a school with a gun if you knew that there was a group of people that loved you unconditionally? It would never happen. If you could talk about all the ways that you've ever felt victimized by life and there was a group of people that would love you right there, would you ever inflict that pain on anyone else? It would never happen. And what's so interesting and so pathetic and so sad is it's our babies killing our babies. I mean, how crazy is that? That our babies are so empty, so, in so much pain, feel so victimized that our babies are killing our babies. It's just not right. And I know we can talk about gun control, but we have to heal the real thing that's going on in our world, which is people don't feel loved. And we don't feel love in this bath of God's infinite love. Okay, so here's what I want from you. I want you to practice this this week. So the first thing I want is I want you to practice this week. That every time, at least once, I, I go to every time and then I roll it back. Just give it to me at least once. All right? Once this week, when you feel victimized, 
I want you to share that with another child of God who loves you, one of your three or four people, not just anybody in the street, but somebody who you believe has a high probability of loving you right there, and say, I feel victimized right here. Could you love me right there? And, and if they say, oh, you shouldn't feel that way, just politely hang up the phone. Like, you're actually going to coach them on what they're supposed to say. So we're going to practice. I love you right there. Together, I love you right there. So you can even say to them, I'm going to share something that really upset me. And the only appropriate response back to me is, together, I love you right there. Well, I didn't, no, they should, you know, I don't need your judgment I don't need your story. I don't need your drama. I don't need you telling me it happened to you when you were five or happened to you last week. I don't need any of that. I need you to say just a very simple thing. But I need you to say it with your heart open. I love you right there. I want you to see that if you are willing to reach out every time you feel victimized, if it doesn't change the way you're living your life. And the second thing I want, especially since this is Ash Wednesday. I want you to be willing during this season, during this next 40 days, because it is kind of a crack up that Easter is April Fool's Day. You know, God, I love God. You know, we start this season on Valentine's Day and we end it on April Fool's Day, that living the spiritual life, if we take it too seriously, we've kind of missed the point, right? So here we go. So, Every day, this 40-day period, I want you to be willing to let go. Whether you burn it, whether you flush it, I want you to be willing to let go of one painful, loving experience a day. That doesn't mean you can't let go of 10. And you can say, well, should I don't, I'm sure I don't have 40. Well, then borrow your neighbors. Because some of us have many more than 40. Okay. I want you to let go of one painful experience, one painful loving experience a day through this time and see if you don't feel profoundly better. So do you know what the homework is? One is to share. Two is to let go of any pain, one a day, any painful experiences around love. Because you don't need them. Has everybody been holding on to at least one thing way longer than you know your soul needed it? Right? You, you, you trust your body. Your body lets go of things really quickly, and it already begins to heal. Your heart and your soul tend to hold on to things forever because you're afraid, and we get stuck. You ready? So did you write down at least one thing tonight that you're willing to put in the burning bowl? If you haven't already, pick at least three. Three painful things around love that you'd be willing to let go of tonight. And let's close with prayer. I invite you to open your mind, your heart, your soul to the power of love. To let love heal us at depth. That there's an infinite supply of love right here, right now, right where we are. And we unleash it for the full power, for the full good for the universe. So in the name and through the power of the living Christ, we give thanks. And so it is. Amen.